All right, here we go. Go ahead and get out your homework. Welcome to Monday. All right, so we had uh, 1 through 12 all. So all these questions were the same. Basically, you find out what the discriminant is, and then whether the discriminant is a positive, negative number, or zero determines how many solutions. Remember, positive number means two solutions. If the discriminant is zero, it's uh, one solution, and if it's negative, no solutions. And that equates to whether the parabola touches the um, x-axis in two spots, one spot, or it doesn't touch it at all. All right, so here we go. Number one, uh, the discriminant is nine, therefore it's positive, therefore two solutions. Number two, it's negative 27, therefore there are no solutions. Number three, it is zero, one solution. Number four, 49, two solutions. Number five, zero, one solution. Number six, negative 20, no solutions. Uh, number seven, zero, one solution. Number eight, 76, two solutions. Number nine, 21, two solutions. Number 10, negative 23, therefore no solutions. Number 11, uh, it's 1.16, uh, therefore there's two solutions. And the last one, number 12, uh, the last question of the year, uh, zero, one solution. All right, go ahead and answer question one on Google Forms. So here we go, last week. So here's what I need you to do. A, uh, some of you might be tempted to say, well, you know, I don't have this test until next week on Thursday. I'll take a look at this on Wednesday night. That would be a bad idea, bad idea. So I, I will say this. All right, you have a lot of time between now and the, and the, the final. But if you, if you wait, you know, if you wait until, uh, you know, a day before the test, it, it, one, it doesn't give you any opportunity to ask me questions. Uh, it also doesn't uh, allow you any opportunity to really review the material. So what would I suggest? Oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes every day, maybe, if this is the one that you're worried about. If you look at the review sheet and you're like, well, I know how to do all of these and I'm super confident. Okay, maybe not so much. But uh, many of you definitely need to review this material. Okay, and and I guess uh, one last plea. You know, if you're if you're really having any issues with any of these subjects, I've tried to break these down into subjects. Uh, please ask me. So uh, today we're going to do uh, uh, basically half of the material, and then on Wednesday we'll do the other half. All right, let's get let's get going. So uh, at the bottom of the Google Forms, you'll see the um, um, the uh, test review worksheet. Um, I I've given you a lot of problems here. This doesn't represent the number of problems that will be on the semester final, but it does represent exactly, I mean exactly, the types of problems. So I'm not going to say, well, you know, cut this in half and that'll be the semester final. Um, uh, the semester final will certainly be, you know, I I for the average student, it'll be over an hour's worth of uh, material to, to take a test on. So I'm shooting for, you know, like I said, somewhere between, I don't know, 50 to a 90 minute test. So if you're really, really quick and you understand material, maybe about 45 to 50 minutes. And if you're struggling with material, it's going to take you a full hour and a half, 90 minutes to take the test. All right, so this is going to cover chapter six through eight. When we came back from Christmas break, we started with chapter six. Uh, we made all the way through, all, well, we made it into chapter 12. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to put, and this will be on the uh, second day review, the only thing that on chapter 12 is going to be uh, the quadratic formula, the easy thing. All right, some, some just general notes, right? Uh, it will be a multiple choice test. Um, and when I say you must get the answer, okay, so if it's a multiple choice test, when you get the answer and you get negative nine, and there's no negative nine as A, B, C, or D, you know, picking the one that's closest to negative nine is probably maybe not the best get best best idea. You know, there's, there's, there's probably a few times when that's correct. Uh, but most of the time, when you get the wrong answer, you, you got to find your problem to get to the right answer. You know, the benefit of this is that you can confirm right then and there you got the answer correct. There should be no doubt whether you did well or poorly on this test simply or, or because it's a multiple choice test. You should know, hey, I got I got two and there it is. You know, answer number number three is two or answer a uh, number three for B is two. Um, the review, I mean, there's no difference between the questions I have on the review and the questions that will be on the test. I mean, the subject matter. So if it's uh, not for algebra one, but if it's a two step equation on the review, there's going to be a two step equation on the test. Please, please, please. Okay, I'm going to, you, you know, some of you are probably going to sit here and just listen to my voice while you're doing this. Do the practice test. 
right? Before, you know, when I say, okay, now I'm going to show you number three, do number three first. See if you can get it done. If you can't, you know, then listen to my explanation. Hopefully it stimulates remembrance of when you learn this, because you've learned all of this before. But I'm saying take an active part. Just don't assume that you can listen to this and you'll do well. Make sure you do the practice test. I personally would recommend most of you doing the practice test at least twice, at least twice. Remember, I give you the answers as well, too. Uh, some of you may want to do the practice test, you know, four or five times. Um, you know, for the for the questions that are hard, right, for the questions that, you know, the first time you take the practice test and you get, you know, these three wrong, I mean, those are the ones you need to focus on. So, obviously, you're only going to have as many questions that I give to you, but that doesn't mean you can't email me and say, hey, I'm really having struggling with a quadratic formula. Can you, or quadratic uh, formula, can you give me, you know, five examples or ten examples? I'll give you plenty of examples, Okay. Uh, you got plenty of time to do this. Plenty of time. The test is next Thursday. Next Thursday, not this Thursday, but the following Thursday. So you got plenty of time, even if there's uh, you know two or three areas that you need need help on. So make sure you use that time wisely. Take the practice test multiple times. Email me for help. Don't email me saying I don't get any of this stuff. Right? That's that's not very helpful. Figure out what you need help on and then email me. Topic one. This will be on the test. Um, well, how do you multiply rational numbers? In other words, how do you multiply two fractions together? Now, this is Algebra 1. Last year, there were just basic numbers. Now, there's numbers and variables. So, remember, when you multiply any two fractions, tops with tops, bottoms with bottoms, numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and if you can, cross-reduce, make your life easy. If you don't cross-reduce, then you have that last step of reduce the fraction. If you do cross-reduce, right, and you fully cross-reduce, then that is your that is reducing the fraction before you even multiply. All right, so let's look at this one. Let's see. And this is the format here. Notice it's question one on the practice test. Uh, there are the four answers. It's already telling you that A is the answer. So let's see how why A is the answer. Well, let's see. i got 11 over 5x squared times 20 over 9. Anything to cross-reduce? Sure. The 5 and the 20. 5 goes into 5 once, 20 goes into, or 5 goes into 24 times. Multiply straight across, so we get 44 over 9x squared, and that's answer A. Uh, remember, you may have to uh, multiply variables. Remember, like variables, you add the exponents. All right, so here's a much more complicated one, but this one actually is pretty simple. Um, remember, you can cancel things that are being multiplied. So is there anything being multiplied that we could cancel? Well, let's see. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of stuff going on here. But notice I have a 12 times something uh, on the first fraction in the, in the denominator. And on the second fraction in the numerator, I got a 12 times something. So we are allowed to uh, cancel the 12s. If it was 12 plus n right on one and 12 plus um, uh, b on the second one, you can't cancel cancel the 12s because that's addition. In this case, there's multiplication going on. We can cancel. Anything else? Well, notice that there is a uh, n plus 14 on this one, and there is an n on 14 on this one. So that would be the same thing as, uh, I don't know, 4 over 4 reduces to 1, that sort of thing. Uh, and anything else? Uh, well, I see uh, there's a 13 plus a uh, 13n plus 4 on this one and a 13n plus 4. Once again, I can cancel these because there's multiplication going on. So uh, hey, we canceled almost everything. The only thing that's left is 5n squared, and that's why that's the answer. Okay, uh, let's do another one. Um, oh, division. So remember, when you're dividing rational, this is topic two, by the way. Uh, when you're dividing um, rational numbers, remember you need to do copy dot flip first. So don't do any cross reduction before you do a copy dot flip. So I do a copy dot flip, uh, and then uh, any cross reduction, lots of cross reduction. So in no particular order, no particular order. Uh, let's see, uh, four goes into twelve three times, and four goes into twenty five times. Uh, 5 goes into 15 3 times, and 5 goes into 24 times. Multiply everything across. Notice I never canceled the, the M. I never canceled the M. So, um, yeah, we're left with, what, 9M over 20, which is answer C. All right. One more, much more complicated division. Remember, in you see division, before you do any canceling or cross-reduction, Let's do a copy dot flip first. Copy dot flip. All right, no particular order. There's lots of different ways to cancel here. 
notice that we got a B minus 8 and a B minus 8 there. Why am I allowed to, to cancel that? Because there's multiplication. That's 11 times the quantity B minus 8. Oh, by the way, that means we can cancel the 11s as well, too. And what are we left with? B minus 8 over 1. Yeah, that was answer, that was answer C. Sorry for uh, flipping that too quickly. All right. Topic number three. Oh, this was everyone's favorite, right? Uh, obviously, I'm being sarcastic here. Um, so this is the adding, subtracting with fractions. And, of course, our fractions are going to have, you know, a mixture of variables and uh, coefficients. Okay. So remember what the steps are. No different than if I was adding one-half plus one-third. You have to get a common denominator. Remember, the way we get a common denominator is we look at the coefficients. The, and we're only looking at the denominators here, right? Uh, the coefficients are 5 and 3. So what's the common denominator of 5 and 3? 15. Then we look at the variables. And I need all of the variables to their highest power. So for instance, there's an x. Well, x is only to the first power. And there's a y, and y is to the second power. So my common denominator is 15xy squared. Okay? If uh, both of them had uh, both denominators had an x, I would pick the x to the highest power. If both of them had a y, I would pick the y to the highest power. Okay. So now we have the common denominator. Um, this is how I do it. I basically, you know, give myself some space in the fraction. I know I need to turn both denominators now into 15xy squared. So on that first fraction, uh, it already says 5x, so what would I have to multiply to get to a 15? That would be a 3. What would I have to multiply to get to an xy squared? Well, I need a y squared. So that I'm going to multiply that first fraction by 3y squared. And remember, it's 3y squared over 3 right squared, because what I'm really multiplying by is 1. All of that would cancel. So I'm not really changing the fraction uh, numerically. I'm changing visually its appearance. Um, okay. Uh, the second fraction, how do you turn a 3 into a 15? Multiply by 5. How do you turn a y squared into an xy squared? We've got to multiply by an x. So I'm multiplying top and bottom by 5x. Right? Okay. Now we're going to do the math. Let's see. The, the first fraction would turn into 9y squared over 15xy squared. And the set plus, second one would be, uh, what, 10x. Uh, and then we simply add those together. Okay. Notice we have common denominators there. So we add. Sometimes when you add the numerators, it might actually accomplish something, right? Meaning that maybe, you know, you could group like terms. In this case, they're not like terms. So it's just 9y squared plus 10x. And by the way, that's the answer. That's answer B. All right, so let's do some subtraction here. Remember, once again, um, when you subtract or add, you have to have common denominators. So let's see, what's the common denominator? First, you look at the coefficients, 2 and 4. Obviously, that would be 4, right? And then you pick all the variables to their highest power. In this case, all we have is x cubed. So that would be x cubed. So in other words, 4x cubed is the common denominator. Separate the fractions, give yourself a little bit of room to work. I need to turn every uh, the denominators for both into 4x cubed. So let's see, the first one, well, the denominator is a 2. So I would not have to multiply by 2x cubed. And remember, we're going to put 2x cubed over 2x cubed, really multiplying by 1. We don't really need to do anything to the second one, but just to show you, don't do this, but just to show you, this is what's really going on. We're multiplying the fraction times 1. We're just choosing to write 1 in a different form, 2x cubed over 2x cubed. All right, we do the math, multiply uh, 2x times 2x cubed. Remember, you add the exponents. That's a 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So we get 4x to the fourth over 4x cubed minus 3 over 4x cubed. We got common denominators. Let's do the subtraction. Do we have like terms in the numerator? No, we don't. So basically, you just um, rewrite what you have, uh, and you're done. Okay, new topic, proportions. Remember, to solve proportions, we cross multiply. Uh, top left with bottom right, and that will equal the bottom left times top right. So let's do that cross. So that would be 4 times the quantity x minus 5 is equal to 7 times 2. Now it's just an algebra problem. Distributive property first. That would be 4x minus 20. That equals 14. And then it's a two-step equation. Go ahead and solve. Now notice we're going to get a, a decimal number, but don't panic. Also notice those numbers are pretty darn far apart. 
All right, that was topic four, solving proportions. Topic number five, negative exponents. Remember the rule for multiplying with exponents is you add the exponents. Power to a power, you multiply the exponents. Division, you subtract. Uh, this is all I'm going to test you on, just multiplying with positive and negative exponents. So remember, we're going to multiply the coefficients with the coefficients. So that would be the three and the four, multiply them together. And then x's with x's, y's with y's, and you're going to add their exponents. So, for instance, that y is to the first, the other one is to the four, so one plus four. The x, the first one is to the second power, and the second one is to the negative three power. So we're going to add those exponents. One plus four is five, two plus negative three is negative one, and three times four is twelve. The last step, remember, negative exponents. If it's on the numerator, you move it to the denominator. If it's on the denominator, you move it to the numerator. In this case, it's in the, it's in the numerator, so we move it down to the denominator. Make it positive and you're done. Uh, next topic, scientific notation. Scientific notation. Remember this is an example of multiplying with both positive and negative exponents. Uh, this is the only time where you're not going to move anything if it's a negative exponent. We're simply going to multiply. So in this case we use this uh, and we um, multiply the 6 times the 4.9 and the 10 to the negative 4 times 10 to the negative 1. Remember, multiplication is commutative, so we can move it around and we can associate it with whatever we want. Okay, 6 times 4.9 is 29.4, and negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. You would think that this is the answer. Well, notice this is not in scientific notation. 29.4 is not between 1 and 10. Remember, it has to be between 1 and 10. So we move the decimal place once, which increases the exponent by 1, so negative 5 plus 1 would be negative 4. Now if it was 0.294 and we made it to 2.94 then we would decrease the exponent by 1. Next topic, calculating slope. I had a number of you guys miss this one. Just remember we can't, you have to first pick lattice points where the blue line intersects where those black lines come together called a lattice point. There's lots of them here. We're not going to choose the end of the, the two arrows. We're going to choose a lattice point. So, for instance, right there is a lattice point. Notice the blue line uh, intersects right between where the two black lines come together. Here's another. Those aren't the only two, but those are the two that I chose. All right. Uh, remember to calculate slope. It's the amount of uh, how much you go up and down, right? That's rise over run. That's rise. And then how much you go left or right, that's run. If you go up, that's positive. If you go down, that's negative. If you go right, that's positive. And if you go left, that's negative. So let's see, rise. To go from the left dot to the right dot, we would go up two squares. One, two, three, four. We would go over four squares. We went up, positive. We went right, positive. Two fourths reduces to one half. There's your answer. Yeah, we're doing this pretty quickly today. All review. Topic eight. Graphing linear equations. Okay, if there's one thing on the test that uh, I don't like, it's this right here. Unfortunately, the program that I'm using uh, only will give me graphs, only will give me graphs uh, that go by two. Notice each one of those tick marks there goes by two. And it's just for these, this one problem right here, meaning that I'm going to give you an equation and ask you to graph it. So be very, very, very careful. All the other graphs that you see on the test, each tick mark will go by one. I have no idea. I can't, couldn't find it in any of the defaults to change this, so we're going to have to live with this. So just be careful. Remember, uh, if it's in the form of y equals mx plus b, and it will be, b is your y-intercept and m is your slope. So in our particular equation, negative 4 is the y-intercept, and 1 fifth is the slope. Now look at the possible answers there. There's only two of them that go through negative 4 on the y-axis. That's b and c. So it's either b or c. We apply the slope, or we just simply look at the slope. Notice the slope is positive. Well, there's only one, b or c, that's positive, and that's b. But if we were to a, a go up 1 and over 5, remember this, uh, the tick marks go by 2 for this particular one, we would see that it's B as well, too. We better do another one just in case. Okay, so once again, I will give you an equation of the form Y equals MX plus B, where B is the Y-intercept, M is the slope. So in this case, the Y-intercept is positive 1. Uh, let's see, which one go through positive 1? That would be A and B are the only ones that go through the Y value positive 1. Remember, we're going by 2 for each tick mark. So halfway between uh, 0 and the first tick mark would be 1. Slope is 3, it's positive. Well, the only one that's positive there is, is A. Or you could go up 3 over 1 from 
the y-intercept. If we go up 3 over 1, we find out we're on the blue line again. Hopefully you're not too confused by that. We do need to talk about horizontal and vertical lines. Remember, all horizontal lines are the form y equals k, and all vertical lines are the form of x equals k. Well, we have x equals 5, so that's a vertical line. So that's either c or d, and it has to go through positive 5. Remember, once again, the tick marks go by 2 here. So 2, 4, halfway between 4 and 6 is 5. Okay. All right, now we're back to nice, friendlier graphs that go by 1. So they're going to ask you to um, uh, look at a line on a graph and, and, and state which, what is the equation of that line. Remember, there are three forms. Uh, if it's horizontal, it's y equals k. If it's vertical, it's x equals k. And uh, if it's just a, a diagonal line, then it's y equals mx plus b. All right, let's see what we know about our blue line there. Well, once again, the tick marks go by 1 now. So the y-intercept there is negative 3. Unfortunately, they all say negative 3, right? Because remember, b is your y-intercept, m is your slope. So we're going to have to use slope. Well, we can look at the blue line and see that it's, it's got a negative slope, correct? So which ones have a negative slope? Uh, that would be a, b, and d. All right, that didn't help us out much. So we got to pick two lattice points. Well, the y-intercept is a lattice point, and then just pick one other one. I'll pick that one. And that one goes, what, down 2 uh, over 3. Sorry for uh, flipping that. Down 2 over 3, so that was a negative 2 thirds. Last topic, scatter plots. Yes, the only thing I will test you on is the correlation. Remember, correlation is drawing a trend line through the middle of all the dots, or the middle of where the dots are going, right? and determining whether that line, the trend line, has a positive, negative, or no slope. And by no slope, we're, we're saying that there's no uh, discernible pattern of the dots. In this case, clearly the dots are going from upper left to lower right. That would give us a trend line with a negative slope, so it has negative correlation. Positive would be the opposite of this. Uh, no correlation would just be a big, massive uh, hunk, of, hunk, hunk of dots, right? There, there's no trend in what the dots are doing. Okay, there's your first uh, review for the semester final. Remember what I said before. If there's something you need help on, go ahead and send me an email. I can give you more worksheets on something specific. With that, I'll see you guys on Wednesday.